Welcome back to the CEC office in Warsaw. Following the uh, summer break, following the lockdown in Poland, we definitely didn't have a break in terms of political events uh, in Poland. I'm here joined by who else but uh, Marek Madraszek, CEC's chairman. Hi, Marek. Hi, good to see you back, Stash. Uh, good to see you. You never back. really went away. <laughs> no, we didn't. Although it might seem so on our YouTube channel, we were always here <laughs> with you. Uh, Marek, I want to jump right into it uh, because a political crisis has engulfed the ruling coalition in Poland as of last week. Just to uh, make one thing clear, it is currently Friday the 25th on 9 a.m. So a lot of things may change by the time this is published. But I think it's important that we uh, recap a little bit of what happened. Last week, the, the ruling coalition basically broke apart over two bills in the same. Uh, which sparked uh, comments that uh, a minority government is coming in Poland, that snap elections are coming in Poland. In the past days, this crisis seemed to be resolved. Um, but I wanted to ask, uh, what are the roots of this conflict between Solidary Poland, so the faction of Justice Minister Zbigniew Ziobro, uh, agreement, porozumienie of the former deputy PM Jarosław Gowin and of peace proper, the, the proper ruling uh, party of Jarosław Kaczyński. Uh, well, you're right, Staszek. It has been a very tense uh, two weeks, but the crisis that we've seen is really just the tip of the iceberg because the problems within the United Right Coalition, the tensions within it, are actually quite deep and they go back in history as well. I mean, the first thing you have to understand is that after the elections of last year, the parliamentary elections, the faction of Mr. Jobro, his party, Solidarity Poland, which was part of the United Right uh, Coalition, the Law and Justice Governing Coalition, got about 18, 19 of its parliamentarians, uh, MPs, into Parliament, which really made them into a swing constituency. They really put Kaczynski in a position that he was dependent on the uh, faction of Mr. Jobro to maintain his majority in Parliament. And that was actually used by Mr. Jobro to, and during the crisis to uh, vote against the key bills that Mr. Kaczynski was very keen on uh, pushing through Parliament. And the reason for Mr. Jobro's ambitions is actually quite clear. He does see himself as the potential successor of Yaroslav Kaczynski. He does want to, he did offer to actually merge his party with that of Mr. Kaczynski. So he has a great deal of political ambition, but there's one man who stands in his way, and that's Prime Minister Morawiecki. And the relationship between the two men, that of Mr. Morawiecki and Mr. Jobra, has been very, very tense over the last few months. And that's another reason for the uh, coalition crisis. There is a third factor at play here. Of course, Mr. Jobro represents a faction of the United Right Coalition, which is much more, some people would use the word robust in its right-wing principles. They've been very much more critical publicly of hawkish, some, hawkish indeed, of some uh, uh, key issues where Mr. Morawiecki has been seen as a bit more, bit more pragmatic. There are issues involving the European Union, particularly on climate policy, and on very sensitive cultural issues, such as the current argument over LGBT issues, Mr. Jobber has been much more conservative in his approach. and That's also been a cause of tension within the government. So it is the age-old conflict between um, hawks and doves, and Mr. Jobber is definitely a hawk. Oh, I think it was just important to explain that this isn't a dispute over an animal welfare bill. Like in, 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 practi in, in it's practice, it's the it result is. of deeper. In deep practice, it is because a lot of commentary was was happening that the government is falling apart in Poland because of this specific issue, and this is only the the symptom of a much deeper problem. And one of the one of the ways uh, Jarosław Kaczyński has decided to cure this this problem, which is most widely discussed, is his uh, reported entry into government as deputy prime minister and as leader of the ruling party. Now, at this time, we think this is 90, 95% likely. We don't know yet, but if that were to happen, what are the, the, the consequences? Well, you're right. This is, in the short term, it seems like a good idea because the, 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 the prospect or the proposal of Mr. Kaczynski entering government, he would become, if, if the rumors are true, deputy prime minister, but also chairman of something that has been called the National Security Committee, which would be a, a new interministerial supervising body of which he would be the chair, and he would supervise the ministries of justice, which Mr. Jobro has, as well as the ministries of defense and the Ministry of Interior. Uh, that's not unlike some of the other committees that you have in the Council of Ministers. You have a, an economy committee as well. 
uh, and, and a social affairs committee. So it would really be a mirror of those other institutions. But it does mean that the man who most people think really runs the country, Mr. Kaczynski, would be moving from his party headquarters into government. He's been prime minister, of course, before, but he would be put in a very curious position of being a deputy prime minister in charge of some very sensitive uh, ministries, uh, above all that of Mr. Jobro, and being theoretically constitutionally subordinate to uh, Mr. Morawiecki, the prime minister. Remember that in the party, it's Mr. Kaczynski who is the chairman, and Mr. Morawiecki perhaps might be made the deputy chairman during the next uh, party congress in, in November. So it creates already a very ambiguous situation in terms of governance. I mean, the best way to understand this is to consider how the next meeting of the Council of Ministers is going to look like. We have Mr. Morawiecki next to Mr. Kaczynski. And the question is to whom the ministers within the cabinet are actually going to be directing their comments and their attention. So the, the, these the, are the dynamics that we love about. So both, uh, both, uh, both camps actually are trying to present this as a victory. I mean, Mr. Mr. Morawiecki is obviously saying, well, this is a way in which uh, there's going to be a, a greater ability to supervise the activities of Mr. Jobro. And Kaczynski has always been, uh, at, at the end of the day, has always been very supportive of Mr. Morawiecki. It's actually Morawiecki he sees as his potential su successor rather than Jobro. On the other hand, Jobro's people are also relatively pleased because what they see is really that this will potentially undermine the authority of Morawiecki, which is their strategic goal in terms of the play that they're making in the relationships with with law and justice. So how this will play out will really depend on Mr. Kaczynski's behavior, as it were, or the way he actually manages his new position. And that will determine whether it's Morawiecki or Jobro who, who benefits from this new arrangement. If, if we discuss this straight after the presidential election, the general opinion was that we have three years of very stable uh, united right rule and that they will go on implementing the very ambitious reform plan uh, but from what you're saying, this sounds like an armistice. This doesn't sound like peace. Well, it's, it's another uh, peace within peace, perhaps not, because we have another three years of government to go. It's a very long time in Polish politics. You are right. Uh, uh, after the presidential elections and the victory of Duda, most people thought this was actually going to be a time of relative calm. It's now not going to be that. I think there are several factors at play here. One is that it's very unclear, as I said earlier, how this dynamic of the entry of Kaczynski is going to affect the government, whether that will dynamise it or whether it will lead to more internal conflicts and manoeuvrings within the Council of Ministers, so that's one point. Secondly, I think during this crisis, uh, there's been one of the victims of this crisis has been the level of trust within the United, United Right Coalition, certainly the level of bad blood that's beneath the surface between Solidarity Poland and Law and Justice and the Agreement Party and Gobin and between Jobro and Kaczynski, Jobro and, uh, and Morawiecki. Is, is, is really something that's going to be very damaging in the long run. I think also from the perspective of public opinion, history shows that one thing that the Polish public doesn't like is divided leadership. And I think this, this uh, public display of conflict within the government and the coalition is not going to serve the governing coalition well in terms of its support within the country. That might start to erode. And also during the conflict, and uh, you mentioned the, some of the laws which were uh, the, uh, you know, the, the objects of this conflict, including the animal welfare bill, that's going to come back. Uh, but that's led to a lot of uh, 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 disappointment within the rural community. The votes that uh, were very important for law and justice winning in, in last year, and also for the victory of President Duda. I think that's the other factor here that's going to be very important, that the re-emergence of Duda potentially as a result of this conflict. He may want to reassert himself as a pillar of of security and stability in the face of this sort of increasing confusion at the governmental level. So there's a new dynamic in Polish politics. It's not going to be a peaceful three years. And we'll, we'll have to wait and see. There are other things going on in the opposition, of course, which, we ha which we'll maybe touch on in the next uh, interview, which may give some comfort to law and justice, because things are not well on the opposition side either. But we'll see how this plays out. But it's going to be an exciting three years, a very interesting three years, unlike perhaps what we were expecting a couple of months ago. That's in the long term. In the short term, next week, perhaps, we can expect decisions on the government reshuffle, the legislative agenda for, for the autumn. Uh, but I'm not going to be here next week. I'm on my annual fishing leave. Uh, You're very able... Uh, assistant. I have planned this months ago. Many, of which you have many. We'll be here. We'll be here uh, to keep us updated. Thanks, Marek. Thanks, Stasik, for the talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.